welcome inside the Thursday edition of House Guests. So this morning we here. Of course we have a new host this morning. That's nice, boy. I like that. I like that. I, I like that. That's supposed to be how it is frequently. That's been good, eh? Anyway, moving along swiftly. Um, this morning here with us, um, we have Miss Elinka Frederick, Miss Universe St. Lucia Contestant. And she's here looking all... Well, mama. Hey, sure. Uh, along with... Um, we have our lovely host as well, eh? Mrs. Lovely St. Amy um, Joseph. Good morning to you, ladies. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, thank you for having us. Uh, thank you to our listeners on Sufra FM online, those of you watching via our 88.5 Sufra FM Facebook page. If you're not watching, listen, you heard Ulan describing how beautiful Alika looks. You want to see it for yourself? Head on over to our Facebook page and join the live. I'm sitting in for Cabrina Abifan, who is on vacation, yes. so I am the host yes. of House Guests just for today. Miss Abifan will be back. But what a coincidence and a pleasure that the one day that I have to fill in for the host. It's actually my little cousin on the show, Alika Frederick. Yes, hello. It's a pleasure having me. I'm happy to be here again. Yeah. <laughs> it appears that every time I'm here, it's in a different capacity. Today, it happens to be for pageantry. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, everyone. And, and if you haven't figured out by now that Erland Symphorian and Ulika Frederick both have a father named Earl... Then now yes, you know. incidentally. <laughs> Earl. Erland. And Earl. Ulika. Mm -hmm. okay. So predictable. So you, the two of you have that in common. Yes. You yes. can bond over that. Yes. <laughs> All right. So let me welcome you again, Ulika. It is such a pleasure to have you so that we can delve into your whole pageant journey. I know this is a milestone for you because I know some of your backstory. So I know that this has always been a dream for you to participate in Miss Universe. So at this important juncture, of your life we really just want to get an update on your journey some insight into what has been happening with you we saw you a lot in Sufre during carnival queen show we know that you teach you tutor so ladies and gentlemen we're going to delve into everything Erlika today so first of all Erlika give us the abbreviated version who is Erlika Frederick Okay, in essence, Alika, also known as Ika, that's how my people call me, um, is Chozelian, born and bred. She is, I would say, very community and family oriented. She is an educator by profession, extremely passionate about students, kids, I should say, and education. I am big on advocacy and youth work in the community. I absolutely love everything pageantry i love fashion i'm into cosmetology and yeah i'm just trying to live out this childhood dream that's what i'm trying to do right now so let's go down memory lane mm -hmm. you said it's your childhood dream yes. how did your involvement in pageantry begin well you know this <laughs> i was born into a family of queens let me put it this way Everybody in my family either had participated in or organized pageants before, and it seemed inevitable for me to have been, you know, have to, have to been drawn into to this life of pageantry. And my first pageant was at the very tender age of three years old at preschool through education. That is where my teachers really saw and harnessed that potential in me and Ever since my family and community folk, they've been lived in this dream of mine, and I've done a plethora of pageants since. And this brings me here, where I'm at right now. So first pageant, three years old, you won, of course. I was Miss Africa. <laughs> <laughs> so from three, what was the next pageant? After three years old, I believe um, my reemergence into pageantry would have been a teen pageant at church. I did not win that pageant. However, it was all friendly competition and we were doing it as fundraising. So it was all fun and it was a great learning experience overall. I believe thereafter I would have done Miss VFCSS at A-level when I was at A-level. I won this one. 
Uh, following that, I did Miss Independence. I was not fortunate to do Shuzel Carnival Queen like my dear cousin here, Miss Former Queen. So that was an expansion for me on the national level, Miss Independence, where I was first runner up. And then I went into National Carnival Queen the very same year in, uh, I believe that process would have started somewhere March, April. So it was three months of prep until July, I won. And that was in 20... That was in 2018. 2018. Yes. So 2018, you become National Carnival Queen. What was that like, being a three-year-old who, who was Miss Africa doing her preschool pageant and deciding... Okay, I'm from a rural community in Schwazel, but I have this dream. I think I want to pursue pageantry. What was that like becoming Miss St. Lucia Carnival Queen? Oh, if I'm to flashback, I remember it being all so surreal. It, it was really something, something really remarkable because I remember during that journey, I was unemployed. I was staying three months away from home by my aunt and it was a very tough process being away from home. I really love community. I love Schwazel, so that's my sanity. I, I always say that. So being in Castries, it was tough. It was really tough for me. And there I was thinking, you know, oh my God, I'm a country girl. This is my first time really being seen on such a large platform like National Carnival Queen. I think it is the, the biggest national pageant that we do have. and. I heard so much about the other contestants that I was competing against in that time. And it took a lot to keep me grounded. You know, I think being with family who who are prayerful and who always tried to their best to instill good values in me, that, that really kept me grounded and it, it helped me with the process. It helped me it made the process easy for me um during that time. But it was not a very easy process, you know. Um, we learn, we grow, we overcome, and that's what I did in an effort to win the National Carnival Queen pageant. Okay, so preschool is where it begins. Mm -hmm. You eventually become National Carnival Queen. What happens next? All right. So as I mentioned a little earlier, I would have stayed with my aunt during that time. She happens to have a toddler then. Well, he's now, um, I should say, He's probably a, a, is a, a, yeah, a full-grown kid, but at the time he was a toddler, and I loved reading to him. He loved listening to me, you know, just read all the time. And she'd watch me and she'd often say, why don't you want to be a teacher? I think you, that's very innate for you. You seem to have those qualities. And... Strangely enough, when I was growing up, I would teach lovely, some of the lovely, lovely's nephews on an afternoon. We'd do homework together and all of that. i teach the leaves, like literally leaves and trees by my home. So and that was, them. yes, that, that actually trees. was something that I wanted to do. But when I got exposed to some of the social ills at school, at A-level, I, I wanted to do advocacy. And so my passion shifted a bit and there I wanted to be a lawyer. But it seems that fate <laughs> had a way for me to become a teacher. And so after Carnival Queen, I was forced by a principal aunt of mine <laughs> to go get interviewed for a teaching job at Labry. And um, it's almost as if it was a match made in heaven. And from September of 2018 until now, five years in the education system. And honestly, I don't regret a moment of it. It's, it's almost as if I discovered my purpose, my passion and my purpose. And COVID-19 actually highlighted a lot of my strengths. Um, it highlighted a lot of the, the things that I, I didn't even know that I was capable of doing, uh, strangely enough. Yeah. COVID-19 was a tough period for many. I'm sure many could relate. But as a teacher being online, I was exposed to a lot of teaching strategies that helped me with integrating um, different um, things like technology into the classroom and that helped my students that helped me in my profession and also I learned how to make my classroom more more inclusive um, you know ensuring that no child is left behind all right so let's delve some more into your career 
you noted that you're five years in the teaching profession. Mm -hmm. We all say teaching is a noble profession. Oh, yes. Um, outside of your experience with that young family member, what would you say really drew you into this noble profession? Okay, I think... And keeps you here because mm -hmm. you're, you're in it for five years. Yes, I think part of that for me is that aside from my cousin, you know, being a very instrumental in why I'm here, I am actually based at a at a girls' school, an all girls' school. Initially, that was not the idea. I was to be shared between two schools, the boys' school and the girls' school. But when COVID came around, um, it shifted things a bit, and so the classes had to be split, and there was a demand for classroom teachers. And so that is how I ended up just being solely at the all girls' school. Which would be library. Which would be the library, RC Girls Primary School. And I have a class of 22 students. I teach grade two. My kids range from, the ages range from six to eight years old. And for me, I don't just only mold these kids, I inspire them. And that's a beautiful thing about teaching girls because they really look up to me. They see me as not only a teacher, but their mother. I, some, a lot of the time they actually call me mommy accidentally and uh, I understand why, because every day that I'm in this classroom, I attempt to emulate the qualities that I hope to, to see them, you know, carry. And it's, it's all really beautiful, the process of teaching, because on a daily basis, I find myself doing a plethora of things apart from teaching. You know, I'm a counselor, I'm a dentist sometimes. Oh, you don't, you, you don't even want to know the, the stories of extraction of tooth in the class teeth in the class but you know it, it has been a fun process teaching and I think that's what keeps me going you know having that that thing to look forward to every time that I set foot in the classroom I, I say to people all the time that teaching is truly a calling on your life and, mm -hmm. and that if your heart isn't in it then it's not the profession for you because yep. like you say you really take on the role of a nurturer a mother to these children. Yes, uh, I like to say it's a vocation, really and truly. I, I believe marriage is a vocation in the same in the same way, in the same breath, I believe that teaching is a vocation. Mm -hmm. There is so much that sometimes our students are dealing with on a home front, and they come to the schools, and perhaps the support that they're not receiving at home, they come to, to, to the school environment, and it really takes a teacher who is in tune with her students Indeed. to pick up that something is wrong, that today it cannot be just about instruction. I might have to play an additional role. I might have to provide some support there. Would you say it's a gratifying experience? It is. Aside from the learning challenges that kids you know, have that may hamper their overall educational experience. I believe that is that is a big part of that. The the background, the home background, it does play an instrumental role in whether that child comes to learn or, or that child, you know, learn, learning is hampered. And as an educator, I happen to be the type of educator who is extremely passionate about her job and she does it genuinely. So it is not a front that I put up. I believe it's innate for me to be a caregiver, to, to sit and, and to be able to relate and resonate with some of the things that my students do go through. So one of the things for me is actually having great rapport with my, the parents of my students. I believe that makes the difference for me. That has made the difference for me. And that is, some of the, that is one of the things that my principal always highlights. That is one of my strengths. And I believe that every educator should try to, to have that relationship with the parents. Not every parent is the same. And you'd have to adjust your talking styles even sometimes. The way that you approach them has to be different because you want the best experience for every child in your classroom. And so we understand that some students may not have a good day, but if you're the type of teacher who's motherly, when, when that child comes into the classroom, you have to ensure that whatever that you're unpacking at home, it stays at home because you don't want to get that energy filtered into the classroom and students pick up on energies. I see it all the time. They pick up on energies. They know when you're not prepared for class. <laughs> <laughs> 
in the same way they know if something is affecting you. So, yeah, boundaries, being able to draw the boundaries and being able to have great rapport is, is equally as important in the classroom. I'm very heartened to hear about the ways in which you are ensuring that your classroom is a safe space for children. I think um, now we're more aware of creating safe spaces for children and it is vitally important for school to mm -hmm. always be a safe space for children. So certainly a passionate educator, Miss Ulika Frederick. Thank you. By the way, do you see synergies with pageantry and teaching? Is there anything from your pageant journey that you think has helped you to be a better teacher? Indeed, indeed. Um, for me, as I would have highlighted earlier on, my first very pageant experience was at the age of three at preschool. So that is where I was introduced to my passion. And I believe that as an educator, we, don't, we should not only try to harness the, the academic side of learning, but also to try to integrate learning so that we, we are able to pinpoint the interests and abilities, the unique abilities of each of our students and to encourage them as well. So I have students in my class who can sing really well, who can dance really well, but I encourage them to ensure that they strike a balance between their academic life and their passions. I don't want any of my students to, you know, put their passions on a back burner because, you know, we as educators, we're like, oh my God, we, you know, school, school, school. No, I believe in striking a balance and I've been able to do that. And I think if I can do it, any child can do it. So it's, it's, an, it's, an, it's being able to, as an educator, really try to encourage them to take school seriously because there are perks in taking school and education seriously but being able to strike that balance. You know, your passions, your interests, your abilities, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. And so I can only hope that one day, my students, who knows, maybe the next beauty queen or dancer or athlete like Julian Alfred or contribute on an international stage as a UN ambassador, I welcome all of the possibilities as an educator. Excellent, so now let's talk about how we got to this new pageant journey of Miss Universe. Okay. What was that like? What prompted you to even, I, I guess there was an application or audition process? It was an audition process? Yes, it was an interview, okay. more or less, so right. So what prompted you to, to finally make that step and say, okay, the fulfillment of this dream mm -hmm. happens this year, 2023? Okay, let me just say that I believe in God's timing. I did have a very unfortunate experience in 2021 when I contested for Miss World St. Lucia. Unfortunately, I lost that title. However, I like to believe that there are losses. There, there's no such thing as losses. It's all lessons. And so I would have learned a lot of lessons during that process. I learned the importance of boundaries. I learned to reposition myself. And during that time was when... I realized this was not my time. This, this platform was really not for me, if I'm being honest. I never threw the idea of Miss World out into the universe, and Lovely knows that. I always spoke about Miss Universe, specifically Miss Universe, and I'm big on manifesting dreams. And I believe what you think, what you speak, when you act on it, you can achieve it. And so for me, Miss World was not the right time and it was not for me. And during this healing process, I've learned to let go. I've learned to slay, you know, not my failures, I would say, but, but slay the things that I, I was not really successful at. And I'm walking into what I believe now is my destiny. I believe that the purpose that this platform serves is greater than me as an individual, but I think we have a collective mission as St. Lucians on the international arena. I love my culture. I'm bilingual. I speak f fluent Creole just as I speak fluent English. And that is something that I would want to highlight on the international stage, that we can integrate that a St. Lucian, a country girl from Chozel, you know, can impart lives and make a big difference on the international stage. So would you say that it was getting to the end stage of your healing that when you felt that you were completely healed you felt it was 
ta- time to take on another challenge? No. Actually, I only healed, I would say, days ago. That's the honest truth. I'm here in this process right now because people saw something in me that I didn't even see in myself, to be honest. I, I think I, there was the spark in me that for a period of time, I seem to have lost and I seem to have planted seeds of doubt and fear in my mind. That is the honest truth. A couple of days ago, I was having a very, you know, personal conversation with my my interview coach, which happens to be Dr. Bennett Charles. And I admitted to him that the most terrifying thing for me on this journey would be to not win Miss Universe St. Lucia and not being okay with whoever the winner is. And I told him I needed to get to the point by the end of, you know, preparation where I was comfortable with whatever the outcome was. And every time I got to a question about T.D. Jakes and him, you know, his summons inspiring my journey and tying it back into my experience with Miss World, there seemed to be this very tense feeling. It was so hard for me to really address the situation. However, today I sit here after many counseling sessions and listening to podcasts and motivational, inspirational videos on, on YouTube. I sit here a healed person. I can openly speak about my experience. And at the end of it all, I think what matters for me is that along this journey, I would have touched a lot of lives. I would have inspired many. And that's all that counts. So whether, I mean, as much as I would have, I would love to win this, you know, this platform, I would love to make it to the international stage, which I do believe I deserve in all fairness. I'm just saying that the fact that I would have inspired so many along this journey alone. It is fulfilling for me. It's enough for me. And I'm, I'll be comfortable with that no matter the outcome come July 31st is what I'm saying. We appreciate your vulnerability, Ulika, because I think so many times, too often, we, we say what we think people want, want to, to hear. hear. So we say... I'm I'm just enjoying the journey and I'm here for the journey, uh, but I think when it comes, there is such a thing as healthy healthy competition. We promote healthy competition, mm-hmm. but the reason that most people enter a competition is to win. You be, and during the course of the competition, you have a genuine belief that you can win or that you will win. I don't think we hear queens admitting too often that, hey, I was in a place where I was not sure I would be okay with the outcome, but I worked through it. I was honest with myself about how how I was feeling. I acknowledged my feelings, but I also acknowledged that I needed to change Mm -hmm. my mindset, my perception, and I did the work to get to the other side where I am now okay with embracing this process for what it is and that I will be okay with the outcome that I will wish whoever it is well but yet still knowing that I have a lot to offer I have a lot to give so I just want to say bravo Ulrika I think it's an important lesson thank you (laughs) in owning owning your feelings owning who you are and sometimes working through those hard parts. Can I just add that in pageantry, what I've observed on the sidelines a lot of time is is that queens, we tend to think that, you know, we should adapt, adopt some personality that is not our own. I see a lot of queens World try peace. so hard. <laughs> we, yeah, we, we, try, we try so hard to, to be what we think people want us to be from the outer beauty and even mentally i just wanted from this from the beginning of this process and i saw it i saw god put things in place for me but when i sat there in the interview for this process the very first thing that i said was that i want to bring authenticity to this platform and and she's and the national director she happened to come in and she said you know one of the things that miss universe actually promotes is authenticity so i'm happy that you're saying that And I don't want to be anybody else but Ulika during this process. I don't want to put on some horse air, horse hair, some facade. That is not me. I wouldn't trade how I look, how I think, 
not for anything in this world because that's what makes up me and uh, being on the international stage the queens who do make it they're queens who stand out why would i choose to want to blend in god made me unique for a reason there's something about me there's there's individuality that i carry that i'm going to use to contribute to great things on that platform so no my advice to any contestant is to be your authentic self so always not just in in pageantry because you're an aspiring queen but carry it with you throughout life in every facet of life always be authentic and that's not to say that you should not recognize the areas where you can grow and exactly. where you can improve exactly. but you do that being yourself and you work on things because there are always areas for, for improvement, improvement indeed and i think mm -hmm. each pageant i've heard you say this each pageant teaches you new lessons, teaches you new things. You grow in different ways. So one particular pageant might have helped you to to develop this aspect of of your personality. Another pageant might help you develop something else. So let's talk about this Miss Universe process so far. We're almost at the end stage. We're almost at the finish line. But so far, what has that journey been like? Right. So you, you said it best, really and truly. For me, if I were to flash back on my past experiences, I would say that they definitely helped contribute to making me a more refined person. During this process um, for pageantry, it was a different type of pageantry. It focused a lot, I believe, on etiquette and, you know, being that prim and prissy girl, you know, who can dress well and, you know, put on a nice smile, be pleasant. It, it showed me many ways training and development, you know. However, with Miss Universe, we see a difference in, in that it focuses a lot on intellect. And so even as an educator, I was forced to not only be my you know most beautiful self but i was forced to be wholesome and that i believed that being able to speak on global or political issues was important so it forced me to do my homework it forced me to be in tune with global social ills and policies you know political policies um educational policies that exist both regionally and internationally so that when i am interviewed let's say in a setting like this one or beyond that i am able to not only be a good representative a good representation for myself but for my country you know i i can be this new age ambassador who's able to speak on anything and that is what i appreciate most about this platform miss universe Ladies and gentlemen, our in-studio guest, Miss Elika Frederick, one of the finalists for Miss Universe St. Lucia. You're listening to House Guest. We're going to take a quick break, but be sure to stay tuned. Those of you online, stay with us. We're going to wrap up our conversation on the flip side of the break. You asked for more live and relevant talk shows, and we heard you. 88.5 Sufra FM presents House Guest. A brand new, fresh fortnightly feature airing on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. House guests will showcase a cadre of professionals, from doctors and entrepreneurs to the next door friendly neighbor. So tune in as we network the community with a platform for open, frank, and informative discussion. Only on Sufra FM, your community radio station. Casualty 911, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. with the consultant. Everybody Health is not hey, merely hey, the absence clap, of diseases. Clap, clap, it is your social, your economic, physical, clap, spiritual, clap, and mental clap, well-being. Clap Just right, imagine we're you on 88.5 Sufra FM, left, talking, questioning, now, sharing your experience, what information, education, right entertainment, news, instructions, left, left, advice on diabetes, high blood pressure, strokes, menopause, AIDS, Turn pregnancy, left. sex. Sex? Did you say sex? As prescribed. Take your medication, exercise, and diet on 88.5 Sufra FM. Tell a friend, call your neighbor. Casualty 911 is on. A wholesome and relationally healthy family is an integral foundation for a strong community and nation. The many social ills that plague our island 
need to be comprehensively addressed to stem the tide of depravity and bring about resilient change and healing. With this in mind, 88.5 introduces an in-depth program called Family Matters. Family Matters is a one-hour program airing every Tuesday morning at 11 a.m. with Human Services Family Caseworker. Listen in for insights and detailed information on core topics such as the disciplining of the child, the integral involvement of men, and the empowerment of women in the family, parenting and associated laws, child and drug abuse, domestic violence, and teenage pregnancy. Call in to air your views and make your contributions on 459-7885 or 459-7888. Family Matters on 88.5, Sufre FM. Are you hosting an event? Want to capture the crowd? Whatever it is, make 88.5 Sufre FM your choice for advertising. The only community radio station on island which offers affordable advertising and promotion cost, which in no doubt will meet your budget with a guaranteed market. Our objectives are founded on being able to provide a voice for the marginalized, a platform that facilitates the free and open flow of information, the promotion of democracy within the media world, and the education of the populace through specifically tailored programs. Call us at 459-7200 or 731-3833. 88.5 Sofa FM, your voice, your light. Welcome back, house guest. I am lovely St. Amy Joseph sitting in for Cabrina Apifan. The guest in studio today is Olika Frederick, teacher, pageant queen, community activist. The list goes on and on. We've had quite an in-depth conversation in terms of you know, what led you into the teaching profession, even your pageant journey. But now we're going to have a little fun with what I like to call a little rapid fire session. So it's just questions, just a one liner answer, just to let people get to know you better, but more the fun side right. of Olika. Okay, so you ready? Sure. All right, Olika, name one TV show you binge watched recently. Manifest. Oh, haven't seen that one. <laughs> What's your favorite movie of all time? Oh, hmm. I'd like to think. Tell me, is the name of the movie actually Lady in Red? Pretty Woman? Is that the name? Pretty With Woman? Julia Roberts? Yes, Julia, Julia Roberts. Oh, okay. Yes. She likes romance. What's your dream vacation destination? Dubai. Hmm, Dubai. What's your favorite song to dance to? Any cast of song. Ah, Any what's cast of your... song whatsoever. Okay, yes, nice. You yes, like the zook. Exactly, yes. Okay. <laughs> what's your go-to karaoke song? Christina Perry, A Thousand Years. If you were a superhero, what would be your superpower? Hmm. I think probably change the world by splashing a little bit of sparkle and love into their hearts. Yeah. <laughs> she would have sparkle superpowers, yes, ladies yes. and gentlemen. What's your favorite fashion trend right now? Barbie. Barbie. Everything pink, everything doll like, yeah. That's cute. I like I like. <laughs> I think you answered this one already. You gave us a hint. What's your favorite genre of music? Yes, Zook. But Zook. I do have others. My favorite artist actually happens to be Lucky Dube. I know that's probably like very interesting like oh lucky Dube, but yeah i love reggae i think lucky Dube's message it's very it's very deep in his songs and i think he would have inspired many during his lifetime and he's still inspiring many through his songs you know yeah who's your celebrity crush idris elba Idris, 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 I know some people who'll be ready to fight you in the streets, girl. If you, <laughs> if you could have dinner with any historical figure, who would it be? Hmm. So somebody who has passed, who you would get this unique opportunity to have a dinner hmm. with. 
I'd say they more racist in this guys. Just because I'm big on culture, it would be very interesting to engage with her. And especially since I'm really big on Creole, I love engaging as well with older folk. So I think that would have been very interesting. I remember early in my career um, at Radio St. Musha, I remember we had a program with her and I can never forget one of the things that she said um, What's a pumpkin a shy gum? And I never <laughs> forgot that. And I was like, that resonates with you, doesn't it? Yes, because I was like, listen, I'm I'm aspiring to be a farm like a shy gum too. Oh, indeed, <laughs> indeed, that's one aspiration in life. See? Yeah. So I I I always remember that about oh. our cultural icon. So I I like that. I like that answer. If you could play a musical instrument, which one would it be? I think it would have to be a harp. I really there's, there's oh, something wow. there's something majestic seeing and whimsical. Uh, yes, it's yeah. mm-hmm. I get it. Yeah. La Rose or La Marguerite? La Rose. La- <laughs> <laughs> I've been a La Rose girl. I've actually been a princess in the community and Deferia would drag me into those things. So I, I can see me with my my first communion gown was actually my my princess gown and I had the sash and the little tiara so so yeah definitely La Rose okay <laughs> Soka or Demi segment hmm that one is that's a tough one hmm I would say Denry Singman only because it's managed to transcend boundaries I'm very proud of you know how the the art form has grown it was so very much a grassroots yes. movement too yes i would see them let me say but both of them are very dear to my heart i love both equally and i think i'm going to end with the universal question What's the universal <laughs> question, <laughs> question? rome alika erland iphone or android iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, Erland. There's a balance in the room. I have both, but I feel like you need to take a course to have an iPhone. It's true. It's more 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 complex. It's It's more complex. It's it's frustrating. It's annoying. The space constraints. You're always running out of space. You have to pay for everything. It's true. You you have a pin for everything and. An Apple wow. ID that I wow. keep forgetting. I cloud account. But, but you know, Alika is iPhone. All right. So tell us in the comments, ladies and gentlemen. La Rose or La Marguerite? Denry segment or Soka? iPhone or Android? I would also like to shout out some of our people watching online. I think I saw Ricky Daisy. Shout out to you. I know you always very in tune mm-hmm. with what's happening on the pageant circle always very supportive to the contestants mm-hmm. makida silai i like to call her one of you know our young you know cultural aficionados um silai if you don't know has been involved in the arts i think like ulika from a very yes, very yes, very indeed. tender age and i know even for you know, a, a, a young person like myself growing up, she was one of those people in the community that I really, really looked up to because she was always involved in performing arts. A very confident young lady, never afraid to expose her talent. So, you know, it, it just gives you that very tangible example that, hey, you can shine. You shouldn't be afraid to shine. Amen. You can shine. And you, you really can make a difference, not just on a community level, but national, international. And so we're so proud to see you doing that, Ulika. Um, Thank you. I just want to ask about Miss Universe and its changes. I think many of us would have seen the topic trending when Miss Universe decided to, I, I would say, open up the platform to women who are married women who've had children for those of you who don't know for so many years it has been the norm that to qualify for a pageant you must be single you must have never born a child um 
and Miss Universe decided to do away with that yes, and late actually last year. right decided that you can be married and be a contestant in Miss Universe uh, you can have a child you can be a mother and be a contestant what do you make of the changes I absolutely love the changes I embrace all of it as I've said this journey has allowed for me to promote and facilitate inclusivity and that's what that's what the Miss Universe platform is doing by actually limiting on those restrictions for women it allows to promote not only women empowerment but inclusivity and that is that is amazing that is amazing for women you know one of the contestants this year for Miss Universe St. Lucia she does happen to be married Keisha Venege Wai and that yes. is something that she also has always wanted to do pageantry she's extremely passionate about it and now that they've opened up you know to other women it allows for her to do it so I'm very happy that she's now getting the chance as a fellow contestant of mine to pursue her dream. You know, it's an opportunity of a lifetime and, and that, that's good. That's very good for the platform and that's good for young women who may have felt that they missed on, out on that opportunity. All right, so Rome, who knows, maybe I can hit the gym, lose a few pounds and... And, and head into Miss Universe. That's right. If we're being yeah. inclusive, let's go all the, all way. the so way. So any shape, any size, you any age too. I they just need to you know tweak that age limit as well. As a well. Little bit. <laughs> and lovely will be able to give me a run for my money because she did a clean sweep and she was the carnival queen. Let me tell you, a clean sweep. No, so no, I, I've I've really enjoyed the transition from mm -hmm. the stage mm -hmm. to the behind the scenes. Oh, nice. I, Chaperoning. I, yes. Being a chaperone, um, training, um, because sometimes I don't do the full chaperoning duties, right. but I will work as an interview coach, um, a speech coach. I might do sessions on effective communication. And I love that because mm -hmm. uh, like you too, I, I grew up around people who were involved in pageantry. I, I think my involvement as a writer, a talent coordinator, writing introductions, writing dress descriptions. Again, like you, Auntie Feria pulled me in from maybe about form one or form two. She said, you're good with English language. You know words. Come, come, sit, help us describe. Mm -hmm. Help us put something together. And that was it. Like, it was a love affair that up to now is still going strong. But I love pouring into young women because mm -hmm. I, I see pageantry. That's important. Yeah, and I see it as a stepping stone to other things. I, I tell every every young lady, you should try at least one pageant in indeed, your lifetime. Indeed. What you will learn, the doors that it might open, the level of networking that you get to do. You know, for me, a young lady from a, a small community, like you, a rural community, there were so many stereotypes about being from the South and being from Schwazelle and wanting to get into media and broadcasting. I think I had a, a, a much easier transition because I was involved in pageantry uh, from a young age. It helped me to network. I mean, the name didn't hurt either. So, you know, always shout out to my mama for that. <laughs> yes. Names are really powerful, might I add. So, Lovely's name, I suppose you just stepped into, you know, the greatness of yeah. your name. For me, my middle name is Makiba. And if you do know, there's actually a song. It's Makiba. It's actually dedicated to Miriam Makiba, who happens mm -hmm. to be coined Mama Africa. And incidentally, I was Miss Africa for my very first pageant. It all tied back into Africa when I was asked my interview about Nelson Mandela. That was my response. I was actually asked about the first black president. And they taught me to say the. And I corrected the vernacular. I said my. <laughs> I, was, I was three and I'll never forget that. Just yesterday, my mom reminded me. So there is something about names and... You see, that's just me telling you, I really believe in manifesting. I know this other little girl whose name is Divine. When I came to the library to be interviewed, one of the first things that I said I was going to do was host a pageant. And I did. She won the first ever Miss Independence Library. And I remember my encounter with her the very first time when this child walked past me. I got goosebumps. There was something. I didn't know her name. I didn't know who she was. It's... It's just something innate 
sometimes in you like if you're a good athlete like Julian Afro you're just a good athlete nobody's gonna take that away from you and that child I saw something in her only to find out her name was divine and you know it's something about me so I would just encourage everybody to you know step into your destiny don't let those those glass ceilings limit you those restrictions you can shatter achieve them. great things you need to shatter them go for your dreams you know don't listen to the naysayers like lovely said there there's criticism or i should say directives that you can pull from and learn from and grow however you know ask for discernment the almighty is going to give it to you going to be able to discern what's good criticism and what is not good criticism and i just wish every one of you listening the best the best in everything that you're gonna possibly do or take on this this year we have just about what, five more months to go yes so, so i actually love the notes that we're on right now since we're wrapping mm -hmm. up um your faith i've heard you make reference to td jakes listening to sermons um you speak very openly and boldly about your belief in god uh, so tell us about what role your faith plays in your life okay at a very tender age my grandma and grandpa who i was raised with really while my mom was away for work they took me to church and uh, Church has played a very instrumental part of my journey. And I know maybe some believers or, or church goers watching right now, they're like, you haven't been there in a while, but I'd like to think that church is not necessarily a physical thing. So even at home, I may contribute in certain ways to, to you know, to actually inspiring people to, to take God and to take religion or spirituality seriously. And... I, if I may say so myself, I believe that my faith in God is what has kept me going. It keeps me grounded. And so listening to those sermons or gospels or even motivational videos that um, these mentors such as T.D. Jakes, um, when they speak, they speak life. They, 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 they speak something very profound that moves me. And so sometimes when I find myself in a very tumultuous place, it presents itself the opportunity presents itself for me to not only you know ground myself but but set the tone for my day or or just uh, any challenge that i i may want to take on for the week or for the month and so that's what my faith does for me all right july 31st miss universe uh tell us a bit about the show what can we expect so I expect you to see, of course, beauty, a lot of grace, a lot of poise. You're going to see a lot of fashion, not only from the models and the, the designer who may, you know, be there. But you'll also get a, a feel of, of us, you know, strutting the runway in some beautiful pieces, carrying our lovely gowns and a whole lot of intellectual show that is what this platform affords and i believe that's what that's something to look forward to because we tend to focus so much on outer beauty but, but lessening on the importance of intel our intellectual capacity as women and i'm very excited to show that side of me come july 31st and i know that the other young ladies the other equally beautiful young ladies are excited to show that side of them too so please come out to support all of us it's going to be a night to remember and yeah one of us is going to be crowned miss universe saint lucia god willing so it's not your the, your the, typical the pageant, pageant format that we're used to no. the swimwear the talent no. the evening wear no. the interview it's a fashion show it's a small fashion show it's more trendy you know more fashion forward we're looking forward to, to you know not seeing your typical segments but as i said you know just just intellectual pageantry more or less so there is an interview oh yes segment yes so okay that yes. for sure remains yes a staple well alika all good things must come to an end. Indeed, it was a lovely being here. We have really enjoyed having no you intended. on. <laughs> <laughs> the, the pun is always intended. Can't tell it was lovely to have you. Yes. 
we wish you the best in your pageant journey, but uh, also uh, with the other things in your life, your career, as I indicated, is a very, very noble profession. And we know that with all of the challenges that we are facing in society, it's so important that we pour into our young people, Indeed. that we help ensure their holistic development. And people like you are right in the forefront of, of that fight. I think it's almost a, a fight for the future of St. Lucia. You are right on the front line. So you have our support, our best wishes, all of our teachers across the island, enjoy your vacation. You deserve it, but we are so appreciative of what you do in the classrooms. That includes you, Ulika, um, the inspiration that you give to young people as well as a pageant queen, your diversity, um, your range of activities that you're involved in, whether on the community level, whether in your school, whether with pageants, as I mentioned, you were a coach for the Sufre Carnival Queen show this year. I know you did some tutoring with Love of Learning, I believe. Yes, and I'm still a, I'm still a tutor as well. So still you're so tutoring actually. right here in Sufre. So I, I think that's another dynamic that I love, mm -hmm. that that Chuzel Sufre connection. Yes. Sister, sister we, communities. We are sister communities, and, and it's important to note that you have been assisting and pouring in in terms of youth development, the creative arts, um, not just in Chuzel, but definitely playing a part in Sufre as well. Alika, I wish you all the best. Your final words. Okay, so thank you all for listening. This has been fun. This has been very deep, very, very deep conversation. Uh, I appreciate all of you having me. I appreciate you listening, following my journey, giving me your unwavering support. That is greatly appreciated. I do just want to um i know it's not really nice ending on a, a swan note but last night a really beautiful young lady who was very she was so so passionate about pageantry herself and i saw this young lady giving in abundance she's just like me god-fearing inspirational very very instrumental on the community level and um, when I saw that this young lady passed away and she's from Sufre. So to all the friends and family of Terry and Compton, if you were privileged to have known such a beautiful soul, I just want to give my heartfelt deepest condolences. Um, I know it's a tough time, but please be strong and um, let's, let's, let's pray that God has great plans for her in heaven because she was really 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 inspirational so inspirational and certainly all of us at at 88.5 sufre fm and by extension the sufre regional development foundation extend our sincere condolences to the family friends loved ones of terry and compton a, a huge loss for the community Indeed. of sufre and our hearts go out to everyone who is mourning her loss Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for joining us for House Guest. I'm lovely St. Amy Joseph. My guest has been Ulika Frederick. Uh, I believe Mr. Dalso is joining us later on. Yes. So stay tuned uh, for that. Um, Mr. Harold Dalso of the SMMA will be on Sufra FM. There's no need to listen to anything else. Stay right here. Keep it locked. Stay tuned to 88.5 Sufra FM. Until next time, which should be in a few minutes, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs>